Hello there! So, as you can tell from the title, this is a bit of a different video from what I normally do. It's a Q&A, and the reason for the season is because I happen to hit 500 followers on Instagram. And while that isn't necessarily the biggest milestone, I thought it was something worth celebrating. Uh, just because I don't really engage with Instagram, at least I used to not engage with Instagram as much as some other platforms, particularly Tumblr and Twitter. And plus, the Instagram algorithm is notoriously up and down all the time, so I thought it was a bit of a miracle that people were finding my artwork and um, enjoying my artwork on that platform. And so uh, I'm hosting a Draw This In Your Style. Um, no set date yet, but uh, I'm interested to see what people do with this piece. Uh, this is a recording of the piece I'm doing for that, and also a, a question and answer video. So that's what this video is. I got some questions that are mostly uh, related to Lubon the Third, just because that's what I've been drawing. Um, and then there's some, also some general ones. So I'm going to start general and then work into the Lubon the Third questions. So starting with the first question here is how long have I been drawing? And so I would say that there's two major milestones in my artistic journey. I would say I remember drawing for the purpose of, you know, displaying my artistic talents and you know, showing people that I could draw when I was about age seven. Um, that's the earliest I can recall drawing with the intent of, you know, making a thing, you know, because I think all children kind of idly doodle as they're growing up, but not everyone draws for the intent of like, you know, representing things. And so I think probably age seven was the earliest time I can remember doing that with, with purpose. Um, I actually got in trouble <laughs> for doodling these long smiling dragons on my spelling tests. And so um, it was around that time that I, I think I really embraced the identity as, um, you know, an artist. And then I didn't really get really serious about my artistic training or my artistic development until I was about 13. Um, that's why I started taking art lessons. So I took art lessons uh, from age 13 to age 18. And I think that's probably the most in-depth, cohesive artistic training I've had. Um, ever since I started college, I've basically been self-taught. All before I was 13, I was basically self-taught as well. So I would say that those are two big milestones, um, age seven and age 13. That's like age seven is when I started drawing and then age 13 is really when I started getting serious about drawing. I have a question here. Uh, what's your fondest childhood memory? Uh, that's kind of a difficult question for me to answer because just I have a lot of fond childhood memories. I know it's a bit of a cop out, but I had a generally happy childhood and thankful to have a pretty happy adulthood, you know, current circumstances notwithstanding. <laughs> you know, most of the world is going through something right now, but I can't really sing a, lot, a single memory. I mean, I. You know, I, I had a pretty nice, easygoing childhood. I think that isn't necessarily most reflective in my art, just because it can get kind of dark sometimes. But it's mostly just because it's fun to draw. <laughs> I promise, I'm not, I'm not like working through something with my art. It's all just for, for fun. But yeah, no, I, I can't really pick out a singular fond childhood memory here. I do apologize about that. I have a question here about what's my inspiration. So, I. I uh, learned a really invaluable lesson when I was in school. I took one singular animation class throughout my college career, and it wasn't really more, it wasn't really a <laughs> educational class, just because the teacher, he was someone who worked in the industry um, as someone who made commercials, so he was a director for commercials, so that was most of his work. I think being a professor was just kind of something he did on the side, um, so we didn't really do a lot of animating in that class, uh, especially not the kind of animating that I'm interested in, but one project we had was we had to create these 75 unique designs using just black and white. And um, that was something I something I had to learn in doing that project was just taking inspiration from everything. So I would look at the sky, I would look at the, the ground, the clouds, just take in everything I could to do this, to do this assignment. And then at the end of uh, grading for that assignment, he informed us that we had to do it again with new new designs and so that experience I think was a pretty critical turning point in my artistic development because I would say before that my inspiration was pretty insular I was um uh, up to the, about age 15 I was really into to manga and anime I think as sometimes shows up in my art but um it was a pretty limited field of inspiration you know I, I was really only wanting to do one thing that did expand a bit as after I turned 15 and got into the Iron Giant that was a pretty big turning point in my artistic development I just kind of flipped the switch I was like okay I have to draw like this this film is everything now um as some of you some of you might know but after I took that class I definitely had to expand my horizons a bit more and just take a look at 
everything, but to get an idea as to what like really drives my art, my artistic, um, you know, inspiration forward. I mean, not to say that everything is an inspiration, but there are particular things that inspire me a lot. Um, film, classic Hollywood films. I'm really into older Hollywood films. Those inspire me a lot just in terms of like inspiration for uh, setting. Um, a lot of my characters, my original characters uh, live in a setting that's similar. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see more of that in the future. But um, classic Hollywood films, other animated films, I mentioned The Iron Giant. A lot of um, non-Disney stuff really inspires me. Taking a particular artist though, uh, J.C. Leyendecker. Norman Rockwell, uh, Gil El Elgren, uh, the panel artist, if I butchered his name there, Pete Hawley, Morris, uh, the artist for the comic Lucky Luke, which I'm a fan of, Akira Toyama, especially his older stuff, his work on Dragon Ball, not so much as it gets into what we call here in the West Dragon Ball Z, I'm not really a big fan of that, but definitely his earlier work on Dragon Ball. And there's a lot of other artists I'm kind of blanking off, but those are like big ones I'm thinking of. Oh, Bruce Tim, um, Darwin Cook, Yonan Vasquez, even though my art style is totally different from what he did. Um, I can't get that angular, unfortunately, but um, I'm trying to think. I mean, basically anything I grew up with, a lot of um, oh, Gindy Tartakovsky, you know, Dexter's Laboratory, Samurai Jack, things that are influenced by the UPA art style, the Hanna-Barbera Hanna art style, definitely. Um, I think as I've gotten older, I've definitely appreciated simplification a lot, although that's not really clear in this piece, but um, simplification is something I've come to appreciate as I've gotten older, so flatter art styles like the UPA or Hanna-Barbera style have influenced me a lot. I probably could go on, but I'm blanking a little bit, but those are some of the big things that come to mind in terms of inspiration um, in my work and uh, my work as an artist and as a writer. Another question I have here, um, any advice for beginning animators? <laughs> so this is really advice I would give myself because I'm a beginning animator myself, is to just practice. Um, the best thing to do is to just, you know, find whatever rudimentary basic tool you might have. I happen to have Procreate and it has in, in built-in animation tools um, and just to just do it, especially if you're animating, uh, following the 12 principles, using those 12 principles to say is something you really have to do you have to learn by practicing. I mean, you can study it as much as I have. I mean, I've studied it <laughs> countless times. I have Richard Williams' book uh, sitting on my bookshelf. But, you know, reading is one thing, but actually putting them to practice is another. And the only way you get better at it is by doing it. I mean, the only way you get better at drawing is by drawing. Of course, you know, having certain pointers, you know, and learn, knowing how to do certain things definitely helps. Um, but there's a lot of resources online that are free on how you can animate. And I'm very thankful for those because they definitely help. And you know, understanding how these things work. The biggest issue I face right now is timing. If anyone has any resources on how to time animation properly, that'd be much appreciated. But yeah, that's the biggest piece of advice I can give is just to practice. I mean, that's the only way you're really going to get better is, is and understand those 12 principles. Okay, moving more into loop on the third questions. Um, I think probably the best one to start with here is who's your favorite loop on character? Uh, by and far and away, Inspector Zenigata is my favorite loop on character. I mean, he's very much my type. <laughs> if you take a look at um, some of the characters I've liked historically, really one in particular, <laughs> uh, namely Kit Mansley from the Iron Giant, it's really no surprise that Inspector Zenigata is my favorite. You know, he's just, he has a lot of uh, boxes for me in terms of like favorite character. Um, the difference I usually say between the two of them is Zenigata has a moral backbone. <laughs> and so that that's what really sets them apart. But um, yeah, I think what makes them similar is really what makes me like Zenigata the most. But that said, all of the characters are great. I mean, that's what really works about Lupin the Third is that all of the characters are really great. I think probably my least favorite, if I had to say, is Fujiko Mine. But even then, I mean, I still like her. My second favorite would probably be Goemon Ishikawa. I just really like his character. I <laughs> need to really draw all of them more. I think probably, depending on the day, my second favorite may change to Jigen Daisuke as well. Um, just because they're really great. They work as a good duo. Ironically, Lupin doesn't break my top two, even though I'm a really big Luzini shipper. I really enjoy that relationship. But uh, Lupin, it, he's still great. He's just not in the top two. I mean, I like Jigen and going one just a little bit more. And then Zenigata, I think he's probably definitely number one, um, just because he hits all of those, those marks for me in terms of a favorite character. You know, who'd be a, a Johnny favorite character? Inspector Zenigata, just look at him. 
Now, when it comes to starting Lupin the Third and how I came across Lupin the Third, which are both questions I got, how did I uh, come across it and where to start? I think those are two very different answers. So I started uh, getting to Lupin the Third by watching the movie The Castle of Cagliostro, uh, which is probably the most well-known piece of Lupin the Third media, probably even more so than the manga. But I probably would suggest starting with part one. It's if you're not really familiar with older anime, it can be a little jarring to watch, but I think it's the best place to start because it gives you a really good understanding of how the characters act in serious situations and in comedic ones. Uh, the first half of part one is more serious, and the later half, as Hayao Miyazaki and directors who were new at the time started to come into their own and direct more episodes, it gets more silly. So I think that's a really good place to start to get a sampling of like, you know, how the characters act in certain situations and who they really are. I mean, they have a pretty simple core, which makes them work in all kinds of scenarios really well. Um, you know, you can go from part three, which is like Looney Tunes stuff, to the Koiki specials, which I've heard are really dark. I haven't gotten to them yet, but um, because the, the core of these characters is so flexible, they can work in really anything, but they really kind of hit all those different parts in part one, and they work really well together in part one. I think it's probably my favorite um, by far, so I, that's why I recommend starting. And then after you finish part one, you can move on to the other stuff like the films. You know, Castle of Cagliostro is nice to watch after part one. Very different from from the show, but I think it's nice to watch after you have an understanding of the characters um, because they are very different in Cagliostro. It's probably like the most pure and wholesome the series gets, um, but it's nice, especially after you kind of have a taste of like how the show can be overall. I have another question here. What's my favorite part of drawing Zenigata? Um, definitely his eyes. I kind of had a bit of a journey when it came to drawing his eyes. It's really subtle, but it's there. I had to like kind of s sacrifice drawing as many eyelashes as possible on his eyes just because it was starting to look a little ridiculous. Um, but they're his like most defining feature and they're so cute, but I had to settle and I think four is probably the magic number, but you know, every time I put them on there, it's, it's just wonderful to see his eyes come together. It's, it's great. I mean, they're big and they're toony and they're expressive and really part of drawing his eyes is drawing the eyebrows. I love getting those big blocky eyebrows. They're just really fun to draw. But I mean, in general, he's just fun to draw. I mean, his whole face is great. I mean, I'm no stranger to drawing characters with uh, <laughs> noted chins, but definitely his eyes are probably my favorite part to draw. Now, I have another question here. What got me into Lupin the Third? I would say this is probably a bit of a different question of like where I started. My journey into Lupin the Third was kind of like not a linear road. So I was first introduced to it in 2018 um, when I did an art trade with a friend and said friend mentioned that I probably would like Inspector Zenigata because that's who I drew. But I didn't actually start investing in a bit further at that point. I think I was probably still really big into my Lucky Luke phase. Uh, the first one anyway, another one might be coming on. But I didn't really like look further into it because I wasn't really getting back into anime at that point. But then I I kind of kind of got back into it in 2019. I watched The Castle of Cagliostro as mentioned, but I didn't go any further because I didn't actually know where to start because um, there's so much Lupin stuff. I mean, uh, to draw a weird comparison, it's kind of like Scooby-Doo where like there's just so much stuff that you don't really know what's good just by looking at it. You need kind of like an insider's view. And so I didn't really have that at the time. And it wasn't really until this year around uh, August that I got back into it because I had some friends who got into Lupin the Third and they kind of recommended where to start. I had kind of started with part two a little bit and that's kind of actually how I fell in love with the characters because I think the part two, part two dub is really good. I think under other circumstances, be the kind of dub that I'd really hate. Um, but something about it really works. The performances are really good. And while it is, I mean, I, again, I just said I really liked it. Well, it is good. I think starting with part one is better. I'm really glad that my friends did suggest that, uh, you know, part one is a better place to start because of all the things I mentioned previously. But um, yeah, I, my, my introduction to Lupin the Third was with that first initial art trade and back in 2018. And I didn't really get back into it again until this year. 
I have two questions here from the same person. Um, what's my favorite Lupin movie and what's my favorite Jigen moment? So my favorite Jigen moment actually isn't from a movie I've seen yet. It's uh, Green vs. Red. It's, you may have seen the scene before, but it's basically when he's on that helicopter and his hair is all wild. Oh, it's really good. Um, I also really like the scene in Mama when he's trying to shoot down the plane that takes away Lupin after they kind of walk the, the Mediterranean coast. I think it's the Mediterranean coast? Maybe the Pacific? I don't know. They walk along the coast for a bit and they stop and rest and he shoots out a plane. Also a really good scene. My favorite Lupin movie is probably Castle of Cagliostro. Even if it is like lighter and softer than like anything else for the Lupin series, I'm biased because the Castle in the Sky is my favorite Hayao Miyazaki film. So it's my favorite. I necessarily, I don't necessarily think it's the best representation of the characters. It's really good animation wise. I mean, it's Hayao Miyazaki. It's a good film, but it's not necessarily like a really Lupin the Third film. Even so, it's definitely my favorite. I really enjoy it. Well, it looks like those are all the questions that I got, so I really appreciate it. Again, thank you for 500 followers on Instagram. It really does mean a lot, especially because it's not a platform I typically post on. So yeah, thank you so much for supporting my art and uh, sticking around.